Hi, this is Sarah. And this is Rachel. And this is The Ripper Diaries, a podcast where we rip apart episode by episode The Vampire Diaries. Warning, this is a spoiler podcast that we're rewatching, and there's a lot of spoilers to be said in this episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you have never watched the series before, I mean, leave right now. This yeah. is such a big, like, I don't know, episode in the the whole series that it's like... Yeah. Yeah, there's so much that like comes to light in this episode. A complete game changer. And, and there's yeah. so much in this episode, I think, to hint to the future and things that we're probably going to, like, mention yeah. in relation to the future. So, yeah, if you're, if you're not caught up on the series at large, back away now while you yeah. can. Yeah, for sure. As you probably can tell from our outfits <laughs> and the way we're talking about the episode, this episode is season two, episode 21... The sun also rises. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big episode. I always think this episode is called The Sacrifice because this is the sacrifice episode. And there is an episode called The Sacrifice that's much earlier. Um, But they go with the very accurate Hemingway reference. Mm -hmm. Um, One that relates a lot to this episode. I had to look it up. I haven't read the book. Um, So the description of the book is it's about the disillusionment of expats and, you know, the cycle Mm -hmm. that they go through and trying to get back to the normal world after, like, you know, an experience that, like, it's it's future that they'll ever get to experience normal life again and it talks about how they're exhausted mentally and physically and they yearn for an understanding of life after a war that changed them forever i was like that's yeah yeah, that's that adds up so that's your description for this episode (laughs) yeah pretty much yeah that's i mean we just call it quits here that's pretty much it (laughs) yeah that's pretty much it instead of expats vampires yeah. i don't know yeah same thing yeah. um so yeah so jumping right into yeah. it this is a continuation of the last one so if you didn't watch the last one or listen to it you probably should because it goes yeah. right in it's literally back to back this is now the night of and we pick up in a lot of places right where we left off yeah um in this case we start off in the Lockwood cellar where Caroline and Matt are locked up still fighting off Tyler oh God. and yeah. Caroline is like holding the gate Tyler in wolf form is Mm -hmm. in hot pursuit trying to get in and matt doesn't think the door will hold he's like it's not gonna hold it's not gonna hold and caroline's like it will and matt shoot first ask questions later donovan does what everybody (laughs) thinks he has to do what no one thinks he has to do yeah he shoots his best friend he literally granted tyler's in wolf form but still like this is what a way to kick off this episode so matt shoots tyler <laughs> yeah but he yeah. does yeah he is in his wolf form but he's so wild for this he's so matt is so assigned cop at birth yeah. that he's like <laughs> he's just in his cop headset even though that's like not gonna yeah, happen for many he's 17 seasons. yeah, yeah. And caroline is like stop it's tyler yeah like what are you doing and Matt's saying, it's trying to kill us, not it's. Matt, what is wrong with you? Do you yeah. call dogs? It's like, what? what? Well, He's yeah. so crazy. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, okay, sure. Like, yeah, Tyler's not in his person form. He's in like a dog or wolf form, but. It's still a living thing. It's still a living thing. And he's like, yeah, it's trying to kill us. I don't know. It's he's just so, he's wild. This. Yeah. So poor Tyler is in wolf form on the ground now. Yeah, he's Panting down. heavily because he's been shot by his best friend. <laughs> and Caroline unlocks the gate saying like they can go around him now that he's like out. Matt's like cautious, but yeah. she forces him to take her hand. And, you know, he she runs off wishing them out of the, of yeah. the cellar. They're away now from Tyler. So we'll see for now yeah also seeing looking into things we see back at the back at lark's apartment damon is sort of looking at his werewolf bite on his forearm and Catherine is sort of standing over him also looking at it and she's she remarks like oh this is what a werewolf bite looks like and you know she says it doesn't really look that bad and damon's just like it will be in, yeah. in time it will be damon's seen this all before yeah he knows how this is all gonna go down doesn't matter that it was just a nip it's yeah. not gonna be good and you know damon asks Catherine if she knows about any cure but she just sort of like shakes her head she doesn't really know and damon starts to leave and Catherine is like 145 years and no less goodbye I love her. Like she just always has to be like trying to get male attention. Oh, she's like she can't just leave it like this. Um, And Damon tells her, "You you don't get a goodbye. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve my goodbye." And Damon again like tries to leave, and Catherine vamp speeds in front of him and like puts her hand on his chest to stop him and tells him not to leave mad, Mm -hmm. which I thought was so interesting. That's such a rare moment of like yeah a little glimmer of humanity from Catherine. Not like a big strong emotional moment, but like. 
Yeah, Catherine Still. and Damon have such an interesting dynamic. They both love to play how they don't care about each other at all, but then also yeah. show these moments where they actually really do care about each other. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to like, when you've known someone over the course of 145 years, like yeah. it's hard to not be emotionally attached to them, especially when like, how many people have you realistically gotten to know for that long in your life? Probably very Not few. Many, yeah. So either way, I think you have some sort of connection to them. So yeah, it is interesting that she's like, don't leave mad. Yeah. And stops him. Um, but again, they're reminding us like, Catherine lured Jenna out to be used as the yes. werewolf in the sacrifice. Like in case you forgot what happened in the last <laughs> one, Jenna yeah. is going to be sacrificed yeah. because of Catherine. And Damon is reminding Catherine again that like she owed him. Catherine owed Damon for giving the vervain to her. Mm-hmm. And instead, Catherine is the only person that's going to walk out of this unharmed. And Elena's going to end up with a dead aunt. Which yeah. I was like, I love that Damon is like equating like his, you know, being owed from Catherine as like something for Elena. Like I, I love how he's so protective of her and her family. Yeah. And Catherine says, I didn't let love get in the way. Like that's why I'm the one getting out of this unscathed. Yeah. And Damon says, enjoy your eternity alone, Catherine, yeah. which love, that is such a, like a growth line for Damon for me of realizing like, yeah, it is not all about coming out unharmed. It's not always about coming out on top. It is about like yeah. loving people and supporting them and being with them. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point of forever if you're alone? Yeah. No, that's such a good point. I didn't even think about that way because I was more like, I'm glad Damon gets his one <laughs> last dig, of yeah. course. But yeah, no, I think that's very accurate. Yeah. Yeah. So Damon gets that little dig and then he's basically just like, I'm, I'm going to leave. He s- starts to walk out and Catherine's like, what are you going to do? And not like that. Not that dramatic. But she, <laughs> she asks, cares. Yeah, yeah, she cares. She does care. And Damon says he's going to go offer himself as a replacement for Jenna. Yeah. Of course. And Catherine tells him Klaus will not take him because his blood is impure mm-hmm. due to the vampire bite. And Jenna is dead either way, which... It, well, that is true. Catherine is right. But also, I really don't like this, like, his blood is impure reasoning. Yeah. It doesn't really make that much sense to me. I feel like they should have just said, Klaus wants him to suffer for meddling. It makes so much <laughs> oh, more sense. that does make more sense. He'll hallucinate and everything. So, like, and we know Klaus does have a real reason. Yeah. The bargaining chip with Stefan. Klaus could have made up the impure thing. Yeah. As he probably like whatever. I don't know. It's weird because they are, like, putting all of their blood into the thing. And having werewolf venom mixed into your vampire yeah. blood is probably not pure for like a witch spell yeah um it might not do anything but like i don't know it's one of those things again where it's like we don't know ancient spells who yeah knows? Who, who can be sure but yeah. yes but i agree it would have been interesting for klaus to be like suffer yeah <laughs> suffer i feel like that fits with klaus so like would have yeah. made sense but anyway we leave them there and then we go of course to the quarry the ritual site mm-hmm where Elena and Jenna are sitting on the ground. Jenna is like clutching at her head. Yeah. She, you know, she very clearly, we know that she's transitioning to being a vampire. And she yeah. has like the transition headache that we saw with Vicky. Yeah. Um, and Jenna's telling Elena, like all she remembers is Elena calling her up and sounding so scared. So as soon as Jenna went to go to take care of Elena, see what was wrong with Elena, mm-hmm. she, someone grabbed her. Yeah. Um, and then she doesn't remember anything else. Yeah. And Jenna asks, like, where are we? Because she doesn't even know where they are. And Elena says they're at the quarry, which, again, I, I forgot this is even yeah. where this takes place. I love that they've used the quarry a few times. Yeah, now. I like well, not it. now, but they will. In the show, yeah. Yeah, in the well, show. they've used it before with Damon and Stefan, I think, returned. Or, like, after they returned, they hid out, like, around here. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. In 1864. Yeah, yeah it's that's an interesting, true. like, little locale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice little Mystic Falls location. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Jenna is realizing that like she is in transition to be a vampire and it wasn't Elena that called her. And Greta arrives to complete that transition. And Elena tries to stop her, but Greta like traps Elena in a circle of fire, which love love the circles of fire that's gonna stick around for the whole episode and i know i was thinking throughout the whole episode honestly i love the visual aspects of this episode yeah it's a great visual episode yeah so many different things you could have done with the spell yeah like in the sacrifice the ritual but yeah the the rings of fire are so so smart especially because like an invisible barricade is just like eh, like they could have just done chalk lines on the ground i don't know like that's boring yeah fire was so cool i know i like the although i must say i feel for our actors here because 
they had to have been doing night shoots for like a oh month on end literally this whole one is night the last one had a bunch of like night yeah. like specific daytime stuff too and the one before the one the next one is also a lot of night shots i was yeah, like that's true these actors are getting no sleep for so long <laughs> yeah that's so true i didn't even think about that i yeah. noticed in one scene like nina had really dark under eye circles and i was like they're working our girl too hard Aww. let her sleep <laughs> oh poor poor nina slash elena fits yeah. with her fits with her character and what she's going through though yeah, she's not sleeping either none yeah. of the characters are either so it makes sense but yes so this situation is getting unavoidable greta is literally like cutting her wrist to offer mm-hmm. up to jenna for a transition and elena's like trying to stop her elena's like don't drink jenna like don't do it which i was like i get it a little bit but also what's the point at this point like I she's know. already dead she needs to transition and at least as a vampire she can like have a little bit more leverage than being like when we see people in transition, they are just like these stumbly, like messy little yeah, like yeah. people in pain. Like it's sickly. It's like she needs to transition. Yeah. Um, so I don't really get why she, but I think she's trying to in denial. Like well, you know, with Elena. in denial, and I think she thinks if Jenna doesn't complete the transition, she can't be the vampire. Yeah, but like Klaus isn't going to show up and force feed her. I know, I know. I'm, it's a little yeah. silly, but again, it's like grasping at straws here in a really impossible situation yeah um but of course jenna does it she drinks the blood yeah and she she, can't resist she can't resist yeah we see how tempting it is as like a new vampire and elena's yelling and crying and greta then puts a fire circle around jenna who looks up at elena with her vampire like eyes and elena says it's gonna be okay I was already starting to like tear up and cry i know right at the top of the episode here with jenna just looking at elena like again obviously yeah. like as a rewatcher knowing where this is going that's part of what makes it so sad but like i don't know, I know. it just hits like right here where i'm like jenna no yeah i know it, on a first first watch i feel like you do think you know they've saved so many important characters yeah. it's like of course they'll save jenna like it, yeah the gravity does not hit you but yeah on a rewatch it's like oh and my god and they're setting up so many options for how they could save ba- bonnie could yeah. still stop and then maybe bonnie could die like on first watch you're just like i've got no, no clue. clue who's yeah. gonna die in this episode i have no clue how this is gonna go down um but as a rewatcher we're focused on jenna we know of course, we know of course. um yeah and never getting jenna back too is such like a you know man it's just I what know. an episode but yes to move along we go back to the old witch house where jeremy and bonnie are down in the basement we didn't see them in the last episode mm-hmm. so we see now what they've been doing they've been looking at grimoires you know all sorts of spells trying to figure stuff out in this situation they're trying to look for a way for alina to not become a vampire mm-hmm. um in order for her to like die in the ritual and then stay human um so I don't know. They they should have been working on this task forever because this is going to come up again in a few months. Little yeah. do they know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. They should have been, yeah, really trying to figure this out. But <laughs> Yeah, not stopped at the mission, but whatever. Yeah, they do say they're not finding anything, though. Yeah, they're def- obviously not. This of course. is like always yeah. an issue. It never, <laughs> there's never a way out of this. No, of course Except for not. in this situation, there is a little one eventually. But anyway, Elijah, Stefan, and Alaric arrive. They're outside. Elijah is explaining again, you know, again, we're doing lots of explaining at the top here to try to like reset up the new episode of explaining how the sacrifice works, the order that it's going to happen in, literally how things are going to go down. And the plan is that as soon as Elena dies in the sacrifice, Klaus will start to trigger his transition into a werewolf. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that happens, Bonnie can appear to bring him to the brink of death. And when he is there, Elijah will finish the job. That's the plan. Which, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) I need to, we need to pause here because I thought the whole point was a witch has to do it. I thought Klaus could only die at the hands of like nature's servant. Yeah, I, feel like I it think it's a little weird. I think it's like yeah. he can, they can, the witch can destabilize and make him so vulnerable that then Elijah could do it, yeah. I guess. I guess. They've just been making it sound like so far it has to be at like Bonnie's hands. It has to be Bonnie who pulls out the heart, does drives the stake into his heart, whatever. Yeah. They make it sound like it really needs to be done by Bonnie. So this always makes me be like, wait. Thought Klaus could only be killed by a witch. Yeah. Also, why does Elijah have to do it? Stefan couldn't do it. Another yeah. vampire couldn't do it if he's already on the brink of death. Yeah. I know Elijah wants to do it, obviously, and that's what they're allowing him. But yeah. it feels like they could have done this without him. So 
I don't know. Mm, interesting. I don't know. Interesting. We don't know what Elijah's telling them, though. He, there might be like, that's true. Guess we got to do it. We got to do it this way. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, Stefan gets a call from Damon at this point, who, mm-hmm. of course, Damon is letting him know that Klaus is going to use Jenna as the vampire in the ritual. And as soon as Stefan hears this, he immediately looks at Alaric. Uh, who just like breaks my heart a lot. I know. Like, he realizes like that he's looking at him and Lark's like, what? Like, what is What's going wrong? on? Yeah. Ugh. So sad. This episode is really just building to. I know. To so much. Yeah. So emotional. Yeah. And as a Lark asks like, what's wrong? And he's looking at Stefan. Stefan's looking at him. We just hear like on the phone, Damon say, Jenna is going to be the vampire in the ritual. Yeah. Because before Damon's sort of like building up to it. Yeah. And then, ugh. And then they get dropped that. And then it cuts straight to the sacrifice where Jenna yeah. is a vampire now in the ritual. And she's kind of like describing to Elena like what it's like to be a mm-hmm. vampire. She's yeah. describing how she feels, what her senses are like. And Elena explains to Jenna at this point that vampires can turn off their emotions, that there's a human part that hurts and that's the part that you can turn off and not mm-hmm. feel. Because Jenna's kind of saying that she can feel that there's a part inside of her that doesn't want to feel any of this. Yeah. And so Elena's explaining that to her. And Jenna starts crying, realizing that, like, she's going to die. Like, she's yeah. literally about to die. And Elena says she won't let that happen. Elena is, is making promises she can't keep. Always. Always. And um, Greta appears now dragging Jules mm-hmm. in. Clearly, Jules is going to be the werewolf in the ritual, which Elena is just assuming. She doesn't know Jules. It's kind of weird that, like, we know Jules so well. <laughs> yeah, I forgot Elena has never seen her or met Jules, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. she had no clue. Um, they never cross paths, which I guess makes sense. Makes sense, sure. And so Greta tells Jules that she put a spell on her to slow down her transition because she's still in human form. We've seen well, Tyler's already a wolf, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He's been biting at Caroline and Matt for who knows how long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as it takes Matt to decide to shoot him, apparently. And so, <laughs> which could be one minute, honestly. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. <laughs> and so Jules is still in human form because Greta has done this spell in order to mm-hmm. like stop her from turning. But this is putting Jules in extreme pain. Greta says that her insides are trying to tear themselves free, yeah. which I was like, Ugh. psychotic. Oh my God, Okay, Greta. Yeah, she's insane. So Greta puts a third ring of fire mm-hmm. around Jules. This is the visual that I really love of yeah, the three. Yeah, when it's just all three of them. It yeah. looks so good. It feels so witchy. I feel like three is like a big number for like witches and magic. And yeah. I really liked the visuals of all three of the women yeah. inside the circles of fire. Um, then at this point, Elena gets a little luxury to Greta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she says, Greta, witches are supposed to maintain the balance in nature. It's your duty to keep this curse sealed. I was yeah. like, I, I get it, Elena. We are grasping at straws. We are doing she anything is, we can. Definitely. But I was like, just funny. I was like, this is not the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, she Greta is, does not care. <laughs> yeah. No. And Greta is like, she's like, my duty is to Klaus and the new order. Which, like, chill. Come on. It's The giving, new order. It's getting cult. I, I'm it's like, giving Nazis. The Nazis were literally the new order. Is the thing that so, they used to preach. I was like, Greta. Yeah, it's so... I don't know. They have Greta be so, like, borderline brainwash that I'm like... Yeah. I don't know. I feel like they're trying to use it to, like, enhance Klaus being, like, the big bad. Yeah, they are. But trying I'm like, to make it seem like he's, like, so, like, a political party type of strength. Like, he's, yeah, like, a whole he's, like, legion. yeah. I don't, I don't know, know if it works. I kind of like the thing that they the next line leans into, mm-hmm. which is more so like the the crush, uh, you know, in love with Klaus vibe. Because yeah, yeah. Klaus arrives right after she says this, and he says, "Glad to know I still have a dance partner." I do like, like that. Cute. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I was like, that makes more sense to lean into of just like she's infatuated with him or something. Yeah. That I would buy a little bit easier. Yeah, which I think is probably what they're trying to do. But they're totally in line where it's like culty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But anyway, yeah. so Klaus looks at Elena, then Jenna, and Jules. Mm-hmm. And he says, hello, my lovelies. Are we ready? So respectful. I know. <laughs> it's like, he's like, oh, on your terms, if you're ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lovelies. He's so... <laughs> He could do no wrong. <laughs> you're, on the other hand, on the other else. hand, let's say your Damon apologist arc is growing strong, and mine is just beginning for Klaus. <laughs> he can. No, I love. He's it. perfect. I love Klaus too. He is. <laughs> he is. Um, he is. We'll ignore. Someone, we'll ignore some later stuff though. Yeah, someone who can do only wrong in my uh, eyes. True. Caroline and Matt have made it to the Lockwood Mansion. They've locked themselves inside, and Caroline at this point finally, like you know, gets a chance to ask Matt. How do you even know, like, what's going on? Because he had the wooden bullets, if you remember from last episode. 
and he shot Tyler. And he's just off the rails. He killed a witch. Yeah, he killed a witch. He killed yeah. Maddox. Yeah. And Matt at this point reveals the honeypot scheme with Liz. He's like, like I got him. I got whatever. He talked to Liz. You mm-hmm. know. And Caroline is like, what? You told my mom? Like, what does she think? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, I, whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> they, yeah, they just. Matt's just loading his rifle and getting yeah. ready. To, and Caroline's like, let's talk about me. Yeah, exactly. I love Caroline, but they had nothing to do for her in this episode. So they were just making it about her love life and her mom. I was like, this is not a good plot for this episode. No, I know. Let's move it along. Yeah. Nothing more to say on that. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. It's basically just that. That, like, Matt's just like, we're stuck in this house trying to, like, Tyler's trying to maul us to death. <laughs> and it's like, okay, just Chill. move along, guys. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we see back at the Salvatore house, Damon just, like, went home. I don't know what he was doing here. Um. But he went home, and he's, like, stumbling to the front door where someone is, like, knocking, knocking, knocking. Mm-hmm. And... The werewolf bite is clearly kicking in. He is, like, stumbling around. He even checks, and you yeah. see it's getting... It's starting to get bigger. It was a very small nip, um, like, at first in the last mm-hmm. episode, but it's definitely, like, growing. Yeah. So he answers the door. <laughs> and he looks at the werewolf bite, and he's like, whoa. And he's, like, <laughs> he's out of it. He's losing it. Yeah. He is out of it. And so, yeah, he o- opens the door, and mm-hmm. he sees Uncle John is at the door. Oh, which my God. Could I, this day get any worse for Damon? Worse. Yeah, this Damon's vibe for sure. I was watching my producer, Shay, and she forgot. And she was like, oh, this guy. It was yeah. Like, great. Yeah, <laughs> we exactly. All had the same reaction. Yeah. And John shows up, and he's like, I need to see Elena. She hasn't answered my calls for days, which damn elena that's cold <laughs> yeah she, elena knows she's like probably going to die and she can't even answer john's call yeah. well she gave elijah her phone for a whole day so that's one I of guess them that's true <laughs> but still but yeah and damon just goes well you're a day late and a daughter short john <laughs> so like, like not comforting at all no i know we're building up that sympathy for john even here i was like yeah poor john he's yeah. just trying to find elena they really know how to switch up on a character for real <laughs> yeah and john is like what like what's going on and damon tells john that the ritual is going down tonight john is of course outraged he's like the sum total of your duties were to keep elena safe how could you let this happen and of course damon is like i did keep her safe i fed her my blood and of course we know john he's even more outraged than before and john tells damon that he ruined elena's life blah 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 and damon is like of course i know that and you know what it actually gets worse and john is like how could it possibly get any worse cut to cut to how it's getting worse (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, we see jules elena and jenna are all still in their rings of fire jules is like still in pain and we see up on like an overlook like some sort of like hill klaus is getting out the moonstone from his pocket and he's giving it to greta but he's like i looked for this for so long i almost don't even want to part yeah. with it I'm like i feel like that is a good little line to throw in there yeah and greta drops it into this bowl f- like filled with flames and the moonstone is destroyed yeah and like greta- sparks this yeah. is the one time a magic show is a real thing yeah this time it's real yeah we have the rings of fire and everything this one's real yeah and Greta starts a spell and Klaus goes over to Jules's like ring of fire. And at this point, Jules is sort of talking to Elena and she tells Elena that everything she ever did was for Tyler because she didn't want him to be alone. And in the middle of this, this is when Elena's like, are you Jules? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, was like, I get I get that Elena's never seen or met Jules before, but I <laughs> This is yeah. a wild line for her to be like, Yeah, she didn't oh, need Jules? to ask that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so, this is where you feel bad for Jules. Yeah. So obviously, like her whole arc, we were like, who cares? Jules is the yes. worst. But they do turn it around right here where you're like, she just wanted to help Tyler and she has to die for it. Yeah. Like if she hadn't come to bring him back, she would be alive. Yeah. Um, so sad. You so do feel for her a little bit. You do. Especially now you see Klaus approaching Jules, ready to go. The ring of fire drops, yep. just completely disappears. And Jules immediately rushes at Klaus to, like, yeah. fight back, I guess, to try to, like, stop him. Yeah. But, of course, he pins her down, and he rips out her heart. Yeah, he, yeah, plunges his hand into her chest, tears out her heart, and he's like, I love this shot. This is, like, a, another John Burying episode. He yeah. popped off. There's, like, an, like, upward angle at Klaus as he, after he rips out the heart, and he's, like, panting, and the blood is dripping so well done so well done yeah it's dead jenna and elena we see like gasp in shock like 
yeah. this is the first death of the night so obviously it's like it's serious yeah now. it's all going down yep. and you can see like jules her dead body like laying on the ground she has a tear running down like yeah. the side of her face and yes klaus looking triumphant and bloody heart in hand ready to get this ritual going yeah e. sad back at the old witch house from the extremely emotional to now yeah bonnie and jeremy flirting Why oh my god switch up to that i'm like okay (laughs) yeah there's so much whiplash in this episode there's a lot of whiplash um jeremy is like reading emily's grimoire Mm -hmm. and he says like he's looking he remembers a section of spells from jonathan gilbert's journal that like emily had done for him or something i don't know he's saying that emily and john had like a bond and bonnie's like yeah i think he had a thing for him and they kind of (laughs) smile at each other People are dying, Bonnie and Jeremy. <laughs> People are dead. What is wrong with you two? <laughs> they killed me. So Alaric shows up to deliver the bad news, unfortunately. He comes down and he asks if he can have yeah. a moment alone with Jeremy. And he says, like, it's about Jenna. Yeah. I'm already full on crying at this point. Oh, in the my God. I was I already, know. like, a mess. Could barely see my notes. Um, I think the... F- and we've, we've already talked about this. But, like, again, the first time you've watched it, you're kind of just holding out hope. You're not really reacting to this stuff. Yeah. But as a rewatch, you're like, it's just getting worse and worse and I worse. I know. Yeah. And so Bonnie leaves them alone to talk. And she goes outside. And she's being told by Stefan and Elijah, obviously, that, you know, Jenna's going to be the vampire. And Elijah, this is when he says that it's a punishment for Damon meddling that you know klaus is going to use jenna and bonnie's like let's go now let me take out klaus before he even kills jenna but stefan says like you know bonnie will still die if she does that and bonnie and jenna don't need to die so stefan offers the alternative he says we're gonna offer another vampire one that he'll want more me which i was like so stefan's gonna offer himself up drama but then also Stefan, why would Klaus want you more? What are you talking about? The uh, I thought about this line too because I was like, "All right, Stefan, chill." <laughs> I was thinking if it is a punishment for Damon, it does make more sense to kill Stefan. That's true. Like if that rationale is correct, it does. Yeah, I mean, also, punishment. yeah, Stefan doesn't know that he's Klaus's boyfriend. Like he doesn't <laughs> yeah. know. He doesn't so, know these things. Yeah, yeah, but I, I thought that where I was just like, why would it? I guess it would punish Elena just as much, but. I don't well, know. she'll be dead, like, so that's, way. in Klaus's mind, it doesn't matter about yeah. punishing Elena, I guess. I guess but, it's more about Damon, but still, I was like, weird logic, but weird, okay. Yeah, it was just a weird way to phrase it, but yeah. sure. It's not all about you, Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody in this whole episode thinks it's about them. Damon, Elena, Stefan, Caroline. Yeah. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> it's really not, but it's yeah. It's all about Jenna. It is all about Jenna. Yeah. Back with Jenna at the ritual. We see that, like, Greta is still chanting the spell, and Klaus is holding, like, Jules's heart over, like, a, a ceremonial bowl, mm-hmm. just some sort of bowl, and he's, like, squeezing the blood into the flames, and Greta tells him, like, the spell is working, because we see, like, you know, the blood in the bowl is bubbling, mm-hmm. which, also, this is just another visual, I'm like, killed it. Like, yeah. his bloody hand, the bowl of bubbling blood... Amazing. such a great episode Everything amazing about it. so many visual aspects and it, they just nailed every single one of them mm-hmm. and at this point like we go over to jenna and elena and jenna is starting to tell elena about when the lawyers called her mm-hmm. and asked jenna to be elena and jeremy's guardian and jenna says her first thought was can't somebody else do this and elena tells her like there's nobody else who could have gotten me and jeremy through <laughs> Like starting to get my voice is cracking. No. (laughs) Alina tells Jenna that there is no one else that could have gotten her and Jeremy through the loss of their parents. And Jenna sort of emphasizes like just the thought that I almost passed up on that opportunity. Oh my god, I don't know why. This scene really gets me. I teared up watching this earlier. But just the thought that she could pass up on this opportunity. And Alina is like But you didn't. You didn't. You took care of us and you were there for us. You put your whole life on hold for us. Mm -hmm. And Jenna is just like, she's so defeated. She's like, I failed you. And Elena at this point says, no, I'm the one who failed you. Yeah. Oh, both of them. They're just so. Yeah. Well, it's so sad because Jenna, like she says, look around, Elena. Yeah. I failed you. Like in reference to the fact that they are literally about to both die together in a ritual right now. Yeah. Um and obviously that's something jenna just could have had no control over she found out about this 24 hours ago maybe less than um and then yeah elena saying you didn't i failed you is like 
Elena, you, you kind did a little of bit, did yeah. Her. Yeah, I think if Elena had at least told Jenna about all of this sooner, Jenna might have been wise to the Catherine play and Elena tricks. And I know. Might not have went out of the house. I don't know. I'm like, I don't want to blame Elena because it sucks all around. It's terrible. But I realistically, do think of, yeah, yeah, no, nothing she could have done really would have probably yeah, prevented Klaus it. Yeah, had his heart set on getting a, a Jenna or even anybody else. He would have done. He it. He would have done it. But, yeah, obviously it's like I just, you know, we've been harping all season. Elena should have involved Jenna a lot Absolutely. sooner than she did. And that would have changed her trajectory for sure. Yeah. Um, So sad. So sad there. Yeah. Um, a little break from the sad always offering us some. Always. Other vibes. <laughs> Matt and Caroline. At yeah. the Lockwood House, Matt is um, on the edge looking out the window. Oh, my. Gun at the ready. This man is like. I don't know. He's he's on something. He just wants to shoot something, I think, at this point. They know Tyler isn't dead because Caroline, like, says, like, he's a yeah. wolf. Like, it's going to take more to kill him. Yeah, exactly. Um, so she just starts asking about her mom. <laughs> She's like, back to me. Um, and Matt says, like, I don't think your mom knows what to do with you, Caroline. Yeah. And Caroline's like, I don't know what to do with me. <laughs> but I hate the way he phrases that. I don't think your mom knows what to do with you. I was I like. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't. Anti-Matt episode, for sure. For sure. Um, and then they hear a noise outside the door, and Caroline opens it, and they see t- Tyler is now in his human form, mm-hmm. laying on the you know doorstep naked. And Caroline takes Matt's jacket to cover him up, and she starts comforting him, telling him he's okay. So yeah. Matt's horror night is or over. <laughs> yeah, Matt can take a breath. He yeah. can put down the gun and chill the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh my god, this man. Yeah boy yeah anyway back to the plot that actually matters to me back at the witch house stefan and elijah are there outside the house and stefan tells elijah that he's headed over to the quarry now and stefan tells elijah to follow with bonnie when it's time Mm -hmm. and because it's very important that klaus doesn't see bonnie before it's time to kill him so as stefan goes to leave elijah remarks to him like you're very honorable which i don't know i liked that line i was like Hmm. I like this little acknowledgement. But Stefan pauses and kind of like takes a step back because he was walking away. And it's like, but are you? Like, <laughs> are you? And he, Stefan goes on to explain, like, I've wanted to kill Damon a thousand times, but I've never been able to do so. Yeah. And we already talked about this in like one of the last episodes, last few episodes. Why is this just coming up now? I feel like this should have been brought up like truly truly like from the get-go yeah. especially from stefan and damon because yeah they probably have both wanted to kill each other yeah I, I, it really is shocking like he because he says in the scene like klaus is your brother like yeah i've wanted to kill mine a thousand times and never done it yeah like it, it's crazy that they wait until this like the are you yeah because this whole plan is contingent on your honor yeah. Elijah, on you doing what you said you're gonna do exactly yeah i guess they were just putting a ton of faith in like like elijah being an honorable person i don't know they were i think well and and at this point obviously now if stefan actually questioning him is like we're so far in there's no alternate there's no alternate plan there's no alternate they have nothing else to focus on other than trying to save jenna at this point yeah so and also they're still trying to save elena from not becoming a vampire downstairs so too much going on there's too much going on yeah so yeah and elijah does go on to explain which again i think stefan just accepts this response Elijah goes on to explain that Klaus is not his only brother. Klaus hunted down the rest of his family, his siblings, his parents, everyone, and scattered their bodies across the sea so that they couldn't be found. Yeah. Which, I don't know. I also just feel like Elijah should know Klaus just didn't throw their bodies to sea. As we see, like, in the next season and in the originals especially, Klaus loves daggering, undaggering, <laughs> daggering, undaggering. He's always got a sibling in a coffin. I feel like Elijah should know he did not just throw them to sea, but... Yeah, some of them have been in there a really long time, though. And at what point are you just like... Too much cargo. Yeah. Gotta get rid of this one. I guess, yeah. 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 And Klaus has grown so paranoid about Michael over the years that I guess True. there's like that factor, too. But yeah, I don't know. We don't know a lot about like what really caused the massive rift in between Elijah and Klaus. We don't have a lot of info yeah. in what's happened between like the 20s or so till now. Yeah. So we don't know what conversations they might have had that has really, truly led Elijah to actually believe that he did this. Yeah. Um, but it, they're but really, yeah, they're really telling us this as like, I think set up, like this is a great season three setup and a great uh, setup for what happens at the very end of this episode, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like we said at this point in the game, like Stefan has no choice, but to be like, 
okay cool like so you just yeah. want revenge let's do this thing yeah exactly yeah and elijah gives him the little line sometimes there is honor in revenge yes which i really liked yeah, yeah that's a good one and elijah says i won't fail you yeah so they leave they head out to go do what stefan leaves to go yeah. try to trade his self for uh jenna yeah um in the house, we see John has arrived, and he shows up downstairs with the Gilbert journals for Jeremy and Bonnie to look for these spells that they need. And upstairs, Alaric tells Damon that Stefan went to switch places with Jenna. <laughs> Damon is obviously extremely frustrated with this, and I do really sympathize with Damon in this episode. Like, everybody's just trying to, like, get themselves killed, and he's got to save everybody. It's just so yeah. much, like... While hallucinating. Yeah. yeah. Like, obviously, Bonnie shouldn't have to die because that's Damon's only answer to any of this is, like, well, let yes. Bonnie go die. <laughs> True. But, like, now Stefan's trying to die, too. Like... Can't catch a break. Yeah, can't catch a break for real. Um, and it's also probably worse now, Damon, knowing that he's probably going to die from the yeah. werewolf bite, too. That makes all of this so much worse. Yeah. So he punches the wall, <laughs> which... He's definitely off balance, falling over when he punches the wall. And, yeah, the werewolf venom is affecting him. Even Alaric yeah. is like... Are you good? Yeah. yeah like, it's like bro, what's going on? Yeah. you don't look so good. Um, and Damon says that he is. And then he, like, says he has to go clean up his brother's mess and just runs off. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. got stuff to do. Yeah. And back at the ritual site, we see, like, Klaus moving toward Jenna's ring of fire and elena is pleading with him one last time like let jenna go we can't leave jeremy without a family like which oh i never remember that this will impact jeremy this much I know. i'm like just oh but anyway as elena's like making this plea klaus is like well well you i don't recall you being on the guest list we don't really see what he's talking about but then Klaus sort of looks up and then Elena looks up toward that like overlook we saw before and then there's just Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'm glad this made you laugh too because Shay and I were dying. We were like, this yeah. is so funny. <laughs> it's not supposed to be, but it is. He's no, just it's really luring not. over like the proceedings. Yeah, yeah no, it's... <laughs> There's a lot of jokes in this because also one when Elena's like pleading to Klaus not to kill Jenna. Yeah. She's like walking forward. She walks into the fire barricade and yeah. Klaus is like, careful. <laughs> I was dying. I'm like, this is so serious and I'm crying, but I'm also laughing. I know. I'm like, I feel like there were a couple points of like, like yeah, comedic <laughs> yeah. moments of relief. You need the relief. This is you such do. a stressful yeah. episode. Just stressful yeah. in that. Again, you don't know who's going to die at what point. And as we see here, Stefan is literally arriving to try to, to trade with to Jenna. To try to die, yeah. Yeah, to try to die um but yeah so the serious moment of him arriving is a little undercut for some reason i don't know if it's the shot yeah. the way he stands what it is but it's funny yeah and stefan says to klaus that he is here to talk and klaus is like okay and he vamp speeds to the top yeah. of the cliff to like talk to him um and klaus says what can i do for you mr salvatore klaus loves his boyfriend he he's does. so excited that he's, he's there so funny <laughs> i know i love klaus and stefan yeah such a goofy little relationship yeah yeah, speaking of goofy little relationship, <laughs> Bonnie and Jeremy are still in this witch house, and but they're with John now, and they're telling Damon that they found a spell that could bind a parent's life force to the child's, and they tell a story about when they had done this spell previously for like a mother and her daughter, and that this spell will work if Elena's soul remains intact. Damon is, of course, skeptical. He's like, you're going to believe this like faith witchy mumbo jumbo mm -hmm. and john is just like i cannot allow elena to become the one thing i've been trying to protect her against yeah classic john prejudiced up until the last moment <laughs> yeah but anyway they're they're trying to save elena and they're kind of like okay sure we'll go along with this but then we cut back to the ritual site of course and we see stefan and klaus are talking on like that like cliff overlook thing still and Jenna and Elena are looking up at them, trying to figure out what's going on, like what they're saying. And at this point, Elena is trying to explain vampire hearing to Jenna and telling her to like focus on what they're saying. And while they're trying to figure that out, we, we cut to Stefan and Klaus up on the overlook saying, Klaus is like, I, what's like, what's going on? And Stefan is trying, he just says, he's like, I want to take Jenna's place. Yeah. Stefan is telling him his proposition. And Klaus is like, but I rather appreciate the symmetry of three women, three goddesses, <laughs> sacrificed at nature's altar. I'm like, I know he's literally going to kill them, like, right now. 
but I love him. I love him. I'm obsessed. I'm like, three goddesses sacrifice at nature's altar. He makes oh, it sound so beautiful. I'm I like, know. can I be one of them? Like, I know. I'm like, what a worthy cause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's so serious and so unserious at the same time. It's like, well, I love him. He's so perfect. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know. So many moments of like, slight comedic relief in this episode come yeah. from klaus being yeah, yeah so just serious but unserious yeah i love him <laughs> yeah love the three goddesses so and i'm like i also appreciate that symmetry so <laughs> yeah. i guess it's okay and we cut back to jenna and elena and jenna is trying to focus on their conversation and do the vampiring and she finally is able to do it and she catches like a few lines of stefan and klaus's conversation And she realizes what's going on. And you can see it on her face. And Jenna tells Elena that Stefan came to take her place in the ritual. Yeah. And Stefan is, or Elena is very clearly in shock and just sort of like looks up at Stefan. Yeah. The position this puts Elena in is just terrible. Like either she's going to have to like be sacrificed with her aunt or with her boyfriend. Like it's such a a lose-lose. Again, everyone is in a lose-lose situation all around here except for Klaus. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's just... It's such an unfortunate thing for her to have to deal with. Yeah. But I will say, her makeup looks so good. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's <laughs> I, I thought it in this scene, sp- <laughs> like, specifically because with the f- they're doing a lot of close-ups, so you could see it. And yeah. then also the fire. It puts this orange light on her that looks so good. I was like, yeah. Nina looks great in, like, an orangey red light. It <laughs> really that. flatters her. <laughs> so Yeah, she does look beautiful. She's going through uh, a terrible time, but she looks great doing it. So, so how bad could it be? No, it's, 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 <laughs> it's still, still really so bad. terrible. Yeah. It's still really bad. Just at least yeah. she looks looks good i guess um but anyway at the lockwood house speaking of comedic relief speaking of ridiculous things um matt is like sitting waiting in the parlor Mm -hmm. and caroline comes out to him saying that tyler is asleep and that he should be fine in the morning and matt is like so this is your life now and and he says that like the past few days with her have been really fun they've been so caroline (laughs) this sounds like a breakup already like pop off he's been shooting things left and right he's been like i'm having a blast i've been telling your mom everything you've been doing i've been lying to your face i've had a great time like what but anyway so unserious but anyway so unserious and he said he thought maybe he mm-hmm. could get over this whole vampire thing but like he doesn't really finish but like clearly he's on the fence about it it's like clearly yeah. he's not settling well with this yeah but the scene is just so weird to me he's like i get it this is your life now but you know what my life is yeah. my life is an absentee mom and a bunch of bills to pay and yeah. school and a job and it and it sucks sometimes but it's my life yeah and then he says and i think i just want to live like without all of this yeah, stuff without basically the supernatural stuff yeah which i have a lot of sympathy for matt and yeah, all of yeah. those things but i'm also like I don't know. Those things don't sound like appealing to choose that as your life. Like, Matt, you have no support system. You have no family. Yeah. You have no money. Wouldn't a vampire be, like, a good alternative? You know, like, yeah. Elena's one where I'm like, it's funny. I feel like in the last one you were very like, why doesn't she want to be a vampire? It yeah. seems great. That's yeah. how I feel about Matt. I'm like, Matt, Elena has, like, a life. Elena wants to be a mom. Like, yeah, Elena, yeah. like, wants these things that being a vampire won't, like, but I'm like, Offer her, yeah. Matt. I do think your life would be better if you were a vampire. I'm going to be real with you right now. Yeah. Well, he has no emotion. Like, he never has any emotion (laughs) at all. So he'd be fine. So, like, yeah. I guess he's like, "Mm, what would be amplified? (laughs) Just being dull, I guess. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. I don't know why. I'm being being mean lashing out because this is such an upsetting (laughs) episode. It is an upsetting episode. There's little to talk yeah. about with the mad stuff here. We're grasping at straws with him. Yeah, definitely. But I do sympathize with what he's saying. And I think... Like, you know, Caroline seems sad at what he's saying, but I'm sure she gets it too. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess the thing is, for as bad as Matt's life is, I don't know, the, the shooting Tyler and the yeah, running around at night seems better. pretty worse. So, yeah. I don't know. I guess I guess I get what he's saying, but sure, still. Sure. Anyway, back at the old witch house in the basement, Bonnie is now officially doing the spell mm-hmm. with Uncle John to prep to save Elena's yeah. life, to, like, tie their life bonds together. And David is impa- impatient. He's yeah. snapping his fingers. Like, let's go. He's like, we've got, we've got a hybrid to kill. Let's go. And Bonnie says she's done. She like, you know, backs off. And Damon just leaves. He's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And um, you know, she says to Jeremy, "I'll be back soon." And Jeremy's like, 
I'm coming with you. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. And she's like, it's not safe. Like, you can't come. And Jeremy says he's not taking no for an answer. Like, he's coming. Mm-hmm. So Bonnie gives him a little kiss. Suddenly, got him. <laughs> yeah, got him. He, like, smiles. And then he looks really confused. And then he just drops <laughs> to the ground. But John catches him. Yeah, John does John catch catches him, him yeah. and sets him, like, on a chair. But I was like yeah i love bonnie that I was know. great that was so good yeah she's so funny for that but yeah yeah john like moves him over to a chair and says he'll stay with him mm-hmm. and bonnie goes upstairs and you know elijah is like it's time so elijah's on his way damon and bonnie go out of the house and alaric goes to try to follow them because he's been here at the witch house too but he's he hits an invisible barrier he's been spelled to stay inside the witch house of yeah. course and he's clearly not very happy about this but yeah. damon is like we don't need to put anyone else at risk like yeah it's just not worth it it's the same reason for jeremy it's like yeah you're human it is not it is not yeah. worth bringing you because well, also like when a lark's trying to walk out he's like i've got the weapons ready to go in the yeah. car and elijah's like bonnie's the only weapon we need yeah, like exactly. a lark is completely like out of his water here out of his depths like this is not there's nothing yeah. you can do to help yeah but, but yeah he a lark feels very bad he says he's like i can't stay in the house while jenna is out there in danger yeah. like this this i, I feel do, for him here yeah this i do sympathize with i don't think they would have made it in time for him to really like see jenna again and talk to her again no but i'm still like this is sad that he doesn't even have the opportunity to try to, to try to help her i understand from his perspective wanting to help her but yeah he definitely would, wouldn't have yeah he would not have helped her but it would definitely feel terrible to be like okay well i can't do anything yeah but yeah, I love Bonnie for this, for knocking I out know. Jeremy, then locking a lark out of the house. <laughs> Girl power. like Yeah, this is a good Bonnie episode, I think. This is a great Bonnie yeah. episode. Um, but also, what did they think? They were going to take a busload of people to the <laughs> set? I'm like, Jeremy and a lark were like, who's driving the bus? Like, yeah, they have like seven a car people figured out. Yeah. yeah, it's just so funny that they were like, we're all going. We all need to be yeah. there. When the whole plan is like, we need to be discreet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Team Bayman rise. Bonnie and Damon putting their things in motion and holding strong together. But we know yeah. who's getting an F on her next history paper for real because Laura's yes. <laughs> not going to forget about this one. True. True. Uh, from the funny back to the serious. Yeah. <laughs> like we just go into <laughs> silence mode like we don't want to talk about this. Yeah, there's just so much to say. But There's so much to say. So back to the sacrifice yeah. klaus and stefan come back down from on top of the cliff i love how the mood just immediately has <laughs> dropped we're like oh no um yeah and klaus says to elena who's it gonna be which again so unserious telling elena to choose between stefan and jeremy oh my here, god yeah or jeremy jenna well especially because <laughs> yeah klaus is kind of silly goofy yeah he tells her to choose and then elena is like no like i'm not gonna choose and klaus is just like well, good. You didn't have a choice anyway. Right? He's like, don't worry. Don't worry. No choice. <laughs> and Klaus vamp speeds and stakes yeah. Stefan in the back, yep. knocking him out like to the ground. And Klaus says, I have other plans for your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I want him alive. Which, love the setup, obviously. Yeah. I love any hint yeah. to like the future episodes. It's always nice. But I feel like on the first watch, you're like, so much is happening. You're not even noticing. You're like, Klaus's plans, who cares? Yeah. Like, what is about plan. to happen? Yeah. Um, and so Klaus tells Greta, ready when you are, start the next phase. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, like Greta does start chanting and she drops the barrier of fire around Jenna. And Elena is screaming, no. And Jenna turns to her and says, it's all right, Elena. I know what I have to do. Oh, Jenna's pretty smart here. She goes for Greta, which yep. is, you know, she learned from Jules going after Klaus. Like, that's not going to work. Yeah. But unfortunately, she goes to bite greta's neck which doesn't kill her klaus is able to like stop jenna and pull her off before that yeah she should have snapped greta's neck but she probably didn't know that was an option i guess yeah probably not and so it's like jenna is thrown on the ground yeah klaus yeah gets klaus on top looks, of her yeah stabbed her in the side to get her off of greta yep and so he is like over her at the ready elena is yelling and she tells Jenna to turn it off, that you won't be scared anymore if you turn off your emotions. And I guess Jenna does. You kind of, your eyes are welling <laughs> They're up. They're glassy. Rachel is looking teary-eyed already. I'm um, fine. I'm fine. <laughs> you're not even the one talking. You're just I listening. know. I know. I'm just listening. I'm like, <laughs> oh, anyway. oh, boy. Anyway, so <clears throat> you kind of see Jenna, like, turn off her emotions and not be so scared. Yeah. And then, of course, Klaus stakes Jenna in the heart. And you hear Elena screaming, no, Jenna, no. Yeah. 
That no Gemma is like seared into my brain. I know. I can I know. like hear that right now. Like it's such a painful like scream and then it of course zooms in on jenna's face as it slowly turns gray and starts to desiccate yeah and it's just so devastating um and of course elena is fully crying by now um as we like see the wide shot of jenna's body like decaying Mm -hmm. and klaus stands up and we see the like stake in her heart and with that elena has officially had to watch her fourth parental figure die directly in front of her eyes which I said it a thousand Terrible. times this episode already, but it's, like, so sympathetic to Elena. This is just awful. Yeah. Yeah, no. I cannot imagine anything worse. But, yeah, at this, Greta keeps going on with the spell, of course, because, you know, that's the next step. And at this point, Stefan sort of, like, comes back to life. And he's, like, trying to get the stake out of his back. But it's, it's like, right in the middle. And he can't reach it. So he's, like, still down for the count. And Stefan, at this point, sees Jenna. And he just says, no. Yeah, it's so Ugh. sweet. And he sees Elena fully, like, crying. Yeah, yeah. And the spell is still going on through all of this. Greta, like, dumps Jenna's blood into the bowl. And then Stefan tries to tell Elena that he is so sorry. Again, Stefan apologizing. You I didn't know. do anything, <laughs> Stefan. Baby, you did nothing wrong. <laughs> I love she tried to do everything right. I love how two episodes ago we were like, Stefan sucks. I, I know. Stephen. I was now like, God, like, I hate Stefan. Now I'm like, I love him. I know. I do love him in these last episodes. Yeah. Uh, they sent him out on a really high note. They do. <laughs> but anyway, so Stefan is just like, no. And he tries to apologize and everything. But Elena is like shushing him. And she's saying, you know, are they still going to come kill Klaus? Mm -hmm. And she's whispering it, of course, because obviously Klaus has vampire hearing. And Stefan whispers back, yes. And at this point, Klaus goes over to Elena's circle of fire and says that it's time. The circle of fire disappears from around Elena. And at this point, Klaus extends his hand toward Elena to like, you know, take her hand and walk her over. Mm -hmm. And Elena obviously looks pissed, upset, every emotion, and just ignores the hand and walks right past him out of the ring of fire and makes her way over to the altar. And she looks down at Jenna's body and Klaus follows her and grabs Elena and Stefan is like watching this. He's struggling to get up and he still can't because the stake is still in his back. Yeah. And Klaus like turns to Elena, like turns her face toward him and thanks her. He he thanks Elena for participating in this. And Elena just tells him to go to hell. Mm -hmm. I love her little defiance, even though she can't do much here. At least she's doing that. At least she can be sassy. Yeah. And Stefan is still trying to like get up when Klaus starts feeding on Elena Obviously, Stefan is helpless. He cannot get that out of his back, and he's stuck on the ground. And Steph- Klaus is draining Elena's blood, and Stefan can do nothing. Mm-hmm. And Klaus is holding Elena tightly, like, as his eyes start to get veinier, and Elena's eyelids start to, like, flutter, and her eyes roll back. She's clearly, like, the life is being drained out of her. And Klaus is, like, holding her... Very intimately. (laughs) Yeah, very intimately. I'll leave it at that since this is such a serious moment. But wow. Okay. And yeah, Klaus eventually like, you know, once Elena's eyes have rolled back and she's definitely drained of blood, Klaus releases her. And if you didn't know already that she was dead, Elena just falls to the ground and blood drips from Klaus's mouth. And the flame in the bowl goes out and Elena's body is just on the ground. Stefan is like staring at her sadly Alina is very clearly dead Mm. and Klaus at this point says he can feel it happening and he starts to transform you know he has like the body like the body spasms where his bones are cracking and he's screaming yes yes like you know very evil villain like and at this point like we he's like screaming yes yes and he sort of like flies through the air at this point (laughs) And, you know, one of those classic uh, Vampire Diaries, someone just shoots through the air. Yeah, special effects went crazy. (laughs) Yeah. And we see Bonnie roll up on the scene down the little path that Elena and Greta walked down in the last episode. And she's chanting a spell. And Greta turns toward her to try to, you know, stop her or do a counteracting spell, something. But Damon snaps her neck just in time before she can do anything. And then Damon goes over to Elena's body and sort of like picks her up gently and we cut back to bonnie who's still chanting a spell she looks so powerful she is everything 
And Klaus is screaming, no, I thought you were supposed to be dead. Very, like, villain, tropey. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're really amping it up in this one. And Bonnie just keeps chanting. And Klaus cries out, like, he's in pain. So she's definitely, like, making him more vulnerable. Yeah. And we go back to Damon and Elena. And Damon, like, has carried Elena over to Stefan's body. And he just, like, gently lays her next to him, which I love. Like, I yeah. know he's probably just, like setting her down so he can pull the stake out of Stefan's back, which is what he does next. But I'm like, there's just something something, sweet about it. Something sweet about the fact that he brought them together. And Stefan tells Damon to get Elena out of here, but that he is going to stay until Klaus is dead. Like he's gonna make sure this goes down. So Damon does. He like picks up Elena and takes her out. And you know, Bonnie keeps going sparks are not sparks are flying but leaves are blowing the classic witch spell signs and elijah rolls up out of nowhere and walks over to klaus and hits him with a hello brother this show's so iconic (laughs) this show is so iconic oh love and stefan sort of goes to stand with bonnie at this point because now he can get up with the stake out of his back and Elijah plunges his hand into Klaus's chest, grabs onto his heart, and says, In the name of our family, Niklaus. Ah. Ah. I love him. He's iconic. Elijah has done no wrong ever in my eyes. <laughs> um, he's about to, though. Well, he's about to, but also not, because I love the original's arc. Yeah. But anyway, um, Klaus cuts him off before he can really even finish saying anything, and he's like, I didn't bury them at sea. Like, just, you know, pleading with him, of course. Yeah. And if you kill me, you'll never find them. Exactly. If you kill me, you'll never find them. Of course, calling back to the Stefan conversation. He's talking about his siblings. Yeah. And Stefan is Stefan and Bonnie are standing right there. And Stefan is like, do not listen to him. Mm-hmm. But Klaus keeps saying, you know, he keeps egging him on. He's like, if you leave me alive, like, I'll take you to them. And Klaus says the magic words. Yeah. I give you my word. Yeah, I will reunite you with our family. Yes. Important distinction well, of what yes. word he's giving here. Exactly. Yes. I will reunite you w- with our family, yes. Elijah. I give you my word. That he does. Very tempting offer. And mm. Bonnie says that if Elijah does this, he'll take she'll take both of them out, mm-hmm. both Elijah and Klaus. But Elijah points out, like, that will kill you if you do it. And Bonnie's like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I don't care. And Elijah looks around at them and he says... I'm sorry. And then he just disappears, <laughs> runs off with them. Stefan and Bonnie start to run towards them, but like, they what were they going to do, do anyway? Anything, obviously, yeah. they weren't going to catch them. Um, they've disappeared. Which also, I was like, Bonnie, why did you start running? You should have started chanting right then and there. Yeah. Freeze spell. Yeah. Stay in place spell. Freeze spell. spell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Something. No, I know. I know. It does feel like there should have been something that was done. Yeah. I love Elijah, but ooh, this man, this was the most extreme going back on your words that he's ever done, I think. This was, like, really bad. Yeah, this is so out of character. It's like, ooh. But it's in character because it's family above all else. So it's, but we don't know that at this point. This is the establishing, I think, of that. Yes. Um, But, of course, he's doing it in the name of his family, obviously. So it's, like, the games. The Michelson games. Mm. I love it. Perfection. But Elijah's Everything. getting played such a fool. Yeah. We'll get back I to know. that. I know. Elijah, next one. you should know these tricks by now. It's been yeah. a thousand years. Yeah, we'll see you next episode, you fool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll get his. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> back at the old witch house, um, Uncle John is sitting downstairs writing a letter. And Alaric oh. is in the doorway, kind of just like pacing. He looks like very nervous. He's worrying. We can see it's light outside now. Clearly, yeah. a, a decent amount of time has passed. And Jeremy is sitting reading one of the Gilbert journals when he realizes that what happened to the parent in the spell that they did. And he asks John if he knows Mm -hmm. what happened. And John says they saved their child and they found peace. And, you know, Jeremy looks very concerned. And John goes over to Jeremy and gives him the letter that he's been writing and says it's for Elena. And he also gives him the Gilbert ring, which immediately Alaric is like, whoa, 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 wait yeah, a second. Yeah, he's kind of like, what's going on? Yeah. yeah, what is going on? And John looks at Alaric and he looks at Jeremy and he says, take care of each other. And then they hear the front door open and Alaric and Jeremy just rush upstairs, obviously like, forget whatever's going on down yeah. there. Let's go see who's here. 
And it's, of course, Damon. He's carrying in Elena's body. She's still passed out. And he lays her down on a sofa that's just randomly there now. And he's, like, gently pushing some of her hair out of her face. And he says to her, if you come back as a vampire, I'll take you myself, so don't. Yeah. And then he very gently says, because I can't stand the idea of you hating me forever it's just so sweet it's such a sweet moment just between just damon really she's dead and nobody else is there so yeah. it's very sweet that he does this and i love how he also has humor in such like a serious moment yeah. of making a joke like that and so of course Alaric and jeremy rush in at this point and jeremy asks how elaine is doing and damon is just looking at her he is not looking away mm-hmm. he's like locked in just watching her and he says that they don't know yet and Alaric immediately asks about jenna and damon finally looks away and he kind of just gives a look, and his expression says it all. And Alaric just says no. And Damon says, I'm sorry, Jeremy. It's clear as day. Jenna, yeah. Jenna is dead. She didn't make it. Yeah. And Uncle John comes upstairs, and he goes outside. <sighs> this scene's going to get me. Yeah. And he looks back inside just as we see Elena jolts to life yeah. with a heavy gasp. And Damon is right there for her when she wakes up. And, like, he's the first thing she sees. I think she says Damon is the first thing she, she says, too. Yeah, yeah. And he asks how she feels, and she says she feels fine. And outside, John is watching the scene unfold, and he seems kind of, like, calm and peaceful. Mm-hmm. And he turns to look off at the woods, and then he shuts his eyes, and he falls to the ground dead. At this oh. point in the episode, I'm sobbing. Oh, my God, yeah. This is how you do a redemption arc. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I'm I like, know. When John comes on the scene in season one, I'm like, I never expected to even care if this person lived or died. But I know. Oh, my God. A two episodes before this, I would have been like, I don't care if he lives or dies. I know. So much longer ago. Yeah. Yeah. Not even and that long and ago. then you get to this. And even on a rewatch, there's just something so tragic about him willingly giving his life in order for her to live a human one, in order to get the life that she wants. It's yeah. so it's so powerful. It's so emotional. Yeah. It's only going to get worse when we get to, like, the letter I know. Bits. Yeah, it's really only amplified by, like, the letter. Which, yeah. Which, yeah, we saw him writing. Yeah. Um, but we, we do get an emotional break yeah. <laughs> from all of that for a second. Yes. <laughs> Truly, this episode is a roller coaster. This, right now, is no exception. We cut back to the Lockwood Mansion, where Caroline and Tyler are there. Tyler is like laying on the couch. He's been resting after getting yeah. shot. He's naked, just wrapped in a blanket for some reason. Yeah. Which is so confusing because I just realized like a little bit ago, they're in his house. He <laughs> yeah. has clothes upstairs, yeah. presumably. Like I know he was shot, but Caroline can bring him some pants. Like, yeah, or a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But he's just laying under a blanket, presumably naked. At least that's how they're <laughs> making it look. Yeah. And Caroline is telling him to never leave again. And yeah. they're just having kind They're of, having a moment. Yeah, they're kind of having their moment. Because she yeah. says that Matt broke up with her and they like kind of cuddle like she curls up into his side yeah. which she's all oh sorry like gunshot wound whatever and <laughs> i don't know and then caroline like really starts sobbing here i was like girl you're doing all of this over matt donovan yeah, be girl, real you're better off be real oh my god so tyler like hugs caroline in to comfort her and she's like leaning into his chest i was like not them cuddling on the couch while he's butt ass naked <laughs> under that blanket <laughs> that's what i was thinking like what oh, is going what? on these two are so unserious and everything else is so serious so i, I don't know. know this is what i'm saying whiplash i'm like truly whiplash oh i'm like hysterically laughing just because i'm so emotional i'm like <laughs> yeah because if we on? really want to get into the whiplash the next scene oh my god oh. clearly now some amount of time has passed we see damon and Stefan downstairs they're dressed in their nice suits they're clearly like ready for a funeral yeah. and damon says as much he tells Stefan that he compelled some grave diggers he found and there were enough plots in the family gilbert mm-hmm. plot and so it's things are ready for a funeral today yeah and damon asks stefan how elena is doing and stefan says she lost the only parents she had like she's in shock yeah cut to upstairs elena is getting ready and she's looking at the mirror putting in her earrings and she sees on her mirror she has a photo of jenna and then she sees a photo of her parents in case we forgot how much this girl has lost, just a reminder. Yeah. Um, and Jeremy walks in and, you know, she's saying, I'll be ready in a minute. And he gives her the letter from John and the Gilbert ring. And Jeremy starts to leave, but Elena stops him. And she says, I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry that you've lost so many people, again, like Steph, and they just apologize for things that are not yeah. their fault. And he says, I still have you. Oh, stop. Which breaks my heart. I know. I, I see why she burns her house down when me. he dies. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go on. No, honestly, I was thinking through this scene. Like, we've mentioned many times before, there aren't really a ton of like Elena Jeremy scenes where they yeah. just get to be siblings. But when there I'm is, like, yeah. Oh, the fact that he says, oh, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I would burn my house down too. You're so right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh and God. Elena smiles and they hug each other. And then Jeremy leaves so that Elena is left alone to sit yeah. in her window and sit down to read John's letter. And Skinny Love starts playing. Oh, my God. You know, you know what's about to go down when Skinny Love by Birdie starts playing. Oh. This is my number two biggest, maybe number three biggest tearjerker episode of the series. This is yeah, one that, yeah. like, no matter how many times I have seen it, I will sob. Yeah. And it, if it wasn't already getting me up until this point, which I've already said a few times that it already was. Yeah. But by this point, as soon as you hear Skinny Love, it's over. It's if you've over. you've made it this yeah. far, you're not making it past this moment. Because then we, of course, also get the voiceover of John's letter as Elena's reading oh. it. So we're going to have to read some of these lines. I'll, I'll read the first one. Elena, it's no easy task being an anor- in Sorry, let me restart that. Elena, it's no easy task being an ordinary parent to an extraordinary child. I failed in that task. Oh, what a way to start. Oh, my God. And then, of course, the voiceover carries us into the next scene where mm-hmm. we see at the cemetery, Elena, Jeremy, Stefan, Damon, Caroline, Bonnie, and Alaric have arrived, all dressed in nice black clothing. It feels like the highest respect being paid, um, you know, for the people they lost. And John's voiceover is continuing, and he's saying that he's haunted by how things have played out, that if he'd been more willing to hear her side of things... And Elena has four roses in her hand and she kneels down to the two graves. We see two new fresh mm-hmm. graves and she lays down a rose on each one. And John, his, his voiceover continues and he says, this is a chance for Elena to get to grow old and do better with her own child, which is why he's left the Gilbert ring to her. And we see Elena just like teary eyed and then she goes over to her parents' grave, which is right there. Oh, this is what's going to get me. <laughs> I know. And she kneels down, placing the last two roses in her hand on each of her parents' graves. And it cuts to Bonnie's face when Elena sees her I parents' know. graves. And she just, like, looks so devastated for her. I know. That was such an interesting choice to cut to Bonnie. Yeah. And show how Bonnie's reacting to all of this. I'm like... It's something about seeing, like, a true friend who, like, loves and cares for her. Like, reacting to, like, yeah. how much Elena's had to lose. That's just, like, so... It's so, so impactful. It's so powerful. It's so impactful. And John's voiceover is still continuing, and he says, I don't ask for forgiveness or that you forget, only that you know that whether you're a vampire or a human, I've always loved you, and I will always love you. Oh, so sad. God. <laughs> Rachel is literally sobbing. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Shay on the side is <laughs> Do we keep going? What do we. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep going. Um, a little pause there because everyone in the room is openly sobbing. I'm holding it together just barely. Yeah. Elena is also openly crying at this moment. And she makes eye contact with Damon, who's kind of, like, moved away from the rest of the group. And it feels like a reminder that he's now one of those people that, like, she cares about. And she stands up and moves back, and Alaric moves forward. Alaric really gets me in this one. I know. Alaric places a single rose on Jenna's grave. He looks devastated. Poor Alaric, starting the dead girlfriend (laughs) arc, too. Like, obviously, Isabel was his first dead girlfriend, but, like, Jenna, like, this destroys him. Like, we'll talk about it in the next one. There's a lot there. Yeah, it carries through season three that this really... This impacts him so heavily. It impacts all of them, realistically, but, like, I mean, Alaric, man. So that's kind of the end of this little moment of the the ceremony, I suppose. And we later see Stefan um, go up to Damon, who's, like, really far from the group now. And he tells Damon that they're going to go back to the Gilbert house, you know, I don't know, whatever. And they need to be there for Elena. And Damon's like, I don't want to go. I want to skip. And Stefan insists, like, Elena needs us right now. Like, we need to be there for her. And Damon's trying to, like, pivot. He's like, how are we going to deal with Klaus and Elijah? Like, we've got to take care of this. He's trying to, like, just get down to business. And um, Stefan's like, I'm not going to lose, let Elena lose anybody else. Yeah. 
And oh. Damon says, I wouldn't make any promises, brother. And then he shows him and he tells him that Tyler Lockwood bit him the other mm-hmm. night. And he shows him the werewolf bite. Um, which, again, the devastation train. Yeah. Obviously, Stefan is just like devastated yeah. to learn this. Yeah, Stefan is so upset. And he's telling Damon, you know, like, we'll find a cure. Like, if we kept Elena human, we did all this, like... We can find a cure. We are going to fix this too. And Stefan is just like, we will find a way. Like, Mm -hmm. I will do this. And Damon is just like, if you want to do something for me, keep this for Melina. Because the last thing she needs is another grave to mourn. It really gets me. Oh, my God. At this point, Damon just like sort of like puts his hand on Stefan's shoulder and walks away. And Stefan watches him. Paul really popped off here. He just looks so sad, so upset. He, he's like just so visu- visibly like in anguish. Like he's yeah. so in agony. Yeah. yeah. Again, I was like sobbing again watching this of like yeah. realizing Stefan has to realize that he might lose his brother right now. It's just like it's so devastating. Yeah. And we see Damon like walk off into the yeah. sunset. Basically. basically, yeah, he walks like through some like through the graveyard. It's like, yeah, oh my god, the sun does look like it's setting or something. I don't know. It's yeah, it's such an emotional ending. And this episode, I think, is truly the finale of season three. And like, I think so. Or season three, season two. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a plot way, um, you know, it is the thing that wraps up the sun and the moon curse, the Klaus arc, the, the yeah. Elijah arc. However. Um, we get the hangover episode, the next one, the actual finale of now this final plot of the things that are not resolved in this episode. And the biggest yeah. one is obviously Damon having a werewolf bite. Yeah. But a lot happened in this one. Yeah. So, so many deaths, which perfectly brings us to our outro. Deaths uncountable. Jules dies, killed mm-hmm. by Klaus. Jenna, of course, dies, killed by Klaus. Elena does technically die. Yeah. Killed also by Klaus. killed by Klaus. <laughs> Greta it dies. She's killed by Damon when yep. he swoops in. And John sacrifices himself for Elena. I don't yeah. I assume we just wanna Yeah, he's killed by magic, so I would say it's like a self, yeah, sacrifice. Yeah. Um I think that's everyone, but yeah, oh my god. A heavy in memoriam. Yeah. I, I don't I think this is like one of the biggest of the series of like a single episode where people yeah. actually die. Not just like yeah. you know, obviously Elena comes back, but I don't and know, a lot of real Real deaths. characters too. Yeah. Crazy. Um, now for some emotional relief, because you're probably all crying listening to this. (laughs) Yeah. Um, for her out of pocket, things we would have done differently. I gotta say from a writer's perspective, nothing I would do differently. It's such a perfect perfect episode. It's perfect. Nothing to change. Um, but of course the characters are imperfect. Yeah. Um, maybe Matt shooting Tyler. That's pretty out of pocket. Why'd he have to do that? Yeah. I didn't really have anything specific in mind, but anything that relates to Matt or yeah. Caroline and Tyler, like, uh, sure. Yeah. I'm good with that. I think going straight for like shooting his best friend. Yeah. Like, right at the top of the episode is pretty out of pocket. Yeah. And just being like, it's after us. The thing is after us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt is kind of crazy in this. Dehumanizing. Yeah. Him. Yeah. So we'll give it to Matt um, yeah. for our out of pocket Easy. moment. Yeah. Yeah, as for quote, I think, I mean, to me, it's pretty obvious it has to be something from John's letter. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I, well, I think I'm going to go with, whether you are now reading this as a human or a vampire, I love you all the same, as I have always loved you and always will. Oh, that's such a sweet one. Yeah. I was on the opposite end of the spectrum as usual. <laughs> of course. I, I said, I kind of like the symmetry of three women, three goddesses. I mean, I do really love that. I <laughs> kind of feel one. like it should be that. I think we got to go John. My other one, I did have an emotional one too, was just Jenna No. Because the yeah, Jenna No scream yeah. from Elena is so seared in my brain. That, I know. Like, I can hear it now. Yeah. Um. But I think we go with John. I think that that's okay. such an impactful part of the episode. Yeah. So, John winner. Um, last is our song of the episode. This is the easiest one yet. There is only one song in this episode, and it is a song of Vampire Diaries that, yeah. like, it could be up against, like, any other song, and it would be an easy win for the most part. Absolutely, um, yeah. It is one of the first songs I think people think of when they think of Vampire Diaries, besides, like, Feels So Close, maybe. Or um, a drop in the ocean. But yeah, it's, like it's in the top three, three to five. Yeah. If you ask someone to name a song from Vampires, it's a solid chance that they name this song. Definitely. And it's, of course, Skinny Love covered by Birdie, which plays during Jenna and John's funeral. Um, it's so perfect. It's it is. It's so perfect. Yeah. Using the Birdie version, so perfect. Yeah. I love everything about it. Easiest winner, best song yet. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I don't even have any other song, but yeah. <laughs> yeah there is no other song. There is no other song, but I wouldn't even if there was. So, yeah. yeah. Love it. 
So we'll be adding Skinny Love by Birdie to our best song of the episode playlist. That playlist is really coming together now that yeah. we've got some of these essential songs in there. Um, so you can find that playlist linked in our various bios and descriptions. You can also find links to our Instagram and our TikTok where you can join the conversation. We're always posting fun clips, memes, polls, all sorts of fun things, mm-hmm. um, you know, about the episode. So join us there. And you can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or you can watch the video version on YouTube if you prefer that. So join us next week for the actual season two finale. I yeah. can't believe we've already done two seasons of this I show. Know. That is crazy. And so close to our one year anniversary. Yeah. Hint, yeah. hint. Hint, hint. We'll have some more things after season two before we get into season three. But mm-hmm. join us next week for the finale. Where we'll be talking about as I lay dying. Mm-hmm. Obviously, as Damon lays dying from his <laughs> werewolf fight. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> Hope we see you next week. Thanks for watching and or listening to this one. Bye. Bye.